Hey everybody, my name is Daryl Angler of Nervous Water Flies and uh, Umpqua Signature Tire, and we're here at Angler's All to tie the HVRT carp fly. We're gonna start this fly with a 2457 TMCO hook in a size eight and some thread in red. 70 denier, denier, how do you pronounce it? I say denier. So we're gonna start this just behind the hook eye and one of the things we're gonna do throughout this fly is we're gonna make sure that we're careful where we lay thread and how much thread we lay. Uh, we wanna make sure that we don't thread the entire hook. We're gonna consolidate our wraps, meaning that if we have to go to the rear of the hook anyway, we'll wait until we have to do that to lay that thread base. Otherwise, to go back and to come back up, we're gonna have to lay another layer of thread. So like small trout flies, we wanna really make sure that we're judicious on how we lay thread and where we lay our thread. So we're gonna wrap it up just behind the eye about, what is that, four or five millimeters, and we're gonna get ready to put our, our uh, lift kit down. Now, the lift kit is gonna be 2.30 bars of lead cut down to four millimeters. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, are you asking me to tie these tiny two pieces of lead on this fly? And I am. Uh, and you can see there, before I tie everything else in, you can get one or two wraps on those two bars of lead and they're not going anywhere. You don't have to really yank on it it's gonna hold. I can actually miss wrap this and have it roll. We'll give you an example, and you can still move this back up. Now what's important here is that you wrap this on the top of the hook shank, right? You don't want your bars sitting off to the side of the hook shank. You want them on the top of the hook shank. So make sure that the two bars of lead are together and on top of your hook shank rather than on the sides. And then we're gonna kind of wrap back and we're not gonna seal this in with thread yet. We want to be able to see some of these bars that we have. The reason being is we're gonna apply a little bit of Loon water-based glue. And this stuff is magic, okay? The reason being is that it's more of a rubber-based glue. Think tear mender, light. When this dries, it's gonna be a flexible hold. So instead of super glue, holding this in tight, uh, it's gonna have some flex to it. So if your head gets hit, it's not gonna just break and then spin on you. It's gonna flex before it decides to break. So building this head with a flexible glue will not only give you durability, but it's gonna give you some flex when you start getting big fish knocking those heads around. We're gonna certainly apply some technique on our wraps going in, uh, but, but having a flexible glue is definitely gonna be part of the foundation of a good secure head. We're gonna now take the 70 down and we're gonna go back up to 140. We're gonna bounce back and forth. We will be back for that, that, that 70, trust me. We're gonna tie our eyes on with the 140 because we really can't get as physical with those eyes with the 70 because it will break on us. Now the purpose of this lift kit isn't to, pot, to put weight. Like I know what you're thinking, we have like weight right here and it's gonna make this dive down. We've got a lot going on in the back of this fly to balance this out. Our goal is to provide enough lift above the hook shank to make this fly roll over. So the hook gap is the weight that we're looking to teeter over, okay? This hook gap is gonna influence that. Now we have some help with this hook because it's a down eye. And we're gonna double this down eye by putting tail drag with our tail. Okay, so that's gonna help us tip the fly over. Making the top shank unstable is gonna really enforce this fly to roll over. Think of a Jeep or a truck, but a Jeep specifically, with really, really big off-road tires, and the higher those tires make the Jeep, you can't turn as sharp because the Jeep's gonna roll. That's the mentality I'm thinking here. The higher up I can put these eyes up off that hook shank is gonna offset the weight that this is balancing the hook on, and it's gonna roll over. So we're just gonna do some X wraps, and I'm gonna get a little crazy on you here. All right, so, don't worry about the, the little bit of lead poking out there. We're gonna cover that up in the end. When I wrap these eyes up, it's gonna look like I'm moving them with my fingers. I wanna be crystal clear here. I am not influencing my eyes with my left hand at all. If I need these flies to go left or right, I'm gonna do that by wrenching and tying with thread wraps, okay? I will support these eyes from behind and from above but I'm never gonna move them this way. If I start stretching these eyes left or right, and this is with, with, with anything I tie, you're stretching the thread wraps that you just put down. So you're gonna put in tight wraps, then you're gonna move the eyes with your hand and you're gonna loosen those thread wraps by moving them. So if you have to do anything, think about wrenching something in when you're using like buckles or straps. The tighter I move and pull this, these eyes will move back and forth. 
So when I tie them on, I make sure that they're straight and perpendicular to that shank, and then I edge them back and forth as I tie them in. They're gonna move left and right as I tighten down, but if I keep them straight, they're only gonna move a fraction. So now I can come in and give three or four and give a, a pull, okay? We're gonna get these about halfway wrapped, and then we're gonna apply some of our glue. So what I'm gonna do here is just get enough on here to absorb in. We don't want enough thread to where that glue is not gonna get to the hook shank. We want the glue to soak through the, the thread and get to the lift in the hook shank. So if you have glue that you put in and you can still see it's almost puddled a little bit, you know that it's saturated. So the rest of this head build will pull that glue up. So now I know for a fact that that glue is now down from the lift kit up to the eyes to the top of the head. If I wait and glue the whole thing when it's done, I don't know for a fact that that glue got down far enough. And I wanna make sure that it's not only durable, but it's flexible. I'm gonna do a couple of wraps here. I'm gonna make sure all my lines, all my pulls are in line, all right? You can kind of look at those eyes right now. Um, one way I check my eyes is I look from this side. I don't look from this side. It's very easy to kind of get fooled. I look at this side and I line my hook shank up with my hook eye. And that's always, always, always gonna be true. So if I can look over here and make sure my eyes are straight, I know I'm gonna be good. All right, now we wanna lock that in to where nothing's gonna loosen as we lock that in. So we're gonna go up above our, our eyes, all right? And we're gonna do the reverse. Under the eye, over the shank, under the eye, over the shank. So now what we've done is we've wrapped three times under the eyes this way and then three times under the eyes and they're gonna cinch into each other when we tighten, all right? So now what we have is a flexible, durable eye slash head with wraps cinching all the way around coming off the eye. We're gonna now wrap to the back and address our tail and that's our head, all right? And we're good. Lock off our 140 and we're gonna go back to 70 because we don't wanna be wrapping a ton of thread on this fly. So I mentioned earlier that we were gonna double up this down eye. If you haven't been uh, informed, the down eye is your friend as a carp angler because it's gonna help us turn this hook over. We've now helped the down eye up front by putting a lift kit with those uh, medium bead chain eyes. So if you imagine a straight line from where our lift kit is or where our eyes are back to the tail, right? We can pretty much figure out that if we tie that tail right about the same spot, and here's a tires trick, you can always take your thread down to your tying point and pull forward. So if you come down low and pull forward, you can find out that's where your eye is right there. So we want our tail just above where the down eye is equal. And the reason being is because we're gonna basically tie in a down eye in the back to help this roll over. That would be called tail drag. We're gonna use Australian possum. The advantage to the Australian possum is that there's kinks all the way through these this fur, and that is gonna allow this to breathe and move differently. Before I cut it, I'm gonna show you off the hide. This is a pretty nice little hank. You're gonna see that when we tie it in, once we trim it down and tie it in, it's not gonna be as much as you think. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be trimming this down. The reason why, it's kinda of like bucktail. As this tapers, it gets thinner at the tail. So if you don't take a big enough hank, the tip of the tail is just not gonna be present or relevant. It's just gonna collapse and barely move. This needs to be a bushy tail. I am gonna measure this off to be the, the length of the body to where my taper is just gonna hit the tie-in point. And I'll trim off most of that to where I have just a little bit left to tie-in. Okay. And again, we're gonna be very careful about the material we tie-in. If I did not have the lift kit up front, you could certainly tie your material over the hook top of the hook shank and make a material lift. Very common to do. Uh, however, in this particular chassis, that is just not what I was looking for. All right, so you can see now, if you look where I'm tying in to where that eye, that, that down eye is in the front, you can see they're just pretty close to mimicking each other. Once I realized that I can control my fly tipping with my lift kit, I really started making sure that this was trimmed down to where I didn't need as much as I thought I needed. Now, so check it out. Loose wraps there. That's not, uh, I didn't bang it in and, and tie it down tight because we still have to tie in a piece of wire. If I tie it down tight, then I've added probably 15, 10 wraps to this, and then I still have to go back and tie in my, my wires. So we're gonna put a loose wrap around that. That's holding, it's not going anywhere. And we're gonna go to our next material, and then as we tie it in back that way, we'll finish tying in our tail. We're gonna make sure that we don't have a ton of body there. 
Uh, this is medium wire. Check this out. We all have this, right? Or is this brassy? Yeah, it's brassy. You can go smaller, no question. I'm not gonna say you can't, but you may lose the rib once you go smaller than the brassy. If we're gonna spend as much attention on the fly, wrapping the thread a particular way and where on the hook shank we tie things, um, I always, always, always tie my uh, wire or materials off the top of the shank. My dubbing loop thread will go off the top of the shank. Uh, we're already gonna be adding thread to every side of this hook shank. So if I add this to the inside to me, now I'm adding weight on the inside of that hook shank, which doesn't jive with everything we've done as far as the design to make this fly go that way. So we tie this to the top of the hook shank just to help with the overall lift of the fly. And we also, also help tie in the rest of our tail that way. So what we've done now is we've set up this fly for as much success as we can possibly get once it breaks the water. We've tied in our lift kit on the front, we've lifted our medium eyes up with our lead, and we've dragged our tail with some tail drag to help turn this fly over. So now we get to dress it up and make it look kind of fun and buggy. I'm gonna do some Harris, Harris ear dub, and you don't have to prep this too much. Um, we're just gonna wrap a body. So if you ever have uh, worked with semi-seal, this is gonna be similar. It's a little unruly, but it's a natural, you know, it's, it's, it's natural. That's how it's gonna be. So there we go. Not too much of a dubbing loop. I like to be able to see my thread through these dubbing loops. And it doesn't have to be like a ton. You know, not that sparse, but if I can see my thread, I know that I can lay a nice thin rope that's in control and balanced. I also break the rules, I'm a, I'm a rebel, in how big you're taught to make your dubbing loop. I've got a lot of shank that I'm dealing with and I can have more consistency with a longer do loop. Now, it gets an unruly situation sometimes if I get six inches and I'm trying to wrap and it, it can get hairy. But at the same time, I get a more consistent wrap with a dubbing loop that's longer than shorter because I have to do that more times. Now going up to the front here, we are gonna stop a little shy of our eyes because we wanna leave room for a hackle feather, entire cable or our wire, we have hackle feather and uh, a touch dub. So we don't wanna cram anything going on, or, 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 you know, we wanna make sure we have space. You can see here, there's about a bodkin width from where I stopped to the head, right right there. That's good, because once we tie in our wire hackle feather, we wanna make sure that our touch dub pushes up rather than filling in. If it pushes up, we build some shoulders, which means we can push some water in a, in a different way. Um, I do prefer my fly upside down and to wrap it by hand um, you get four wraps. Your fifth wrap is your secure wrap. And your fifth wrap won't be as visible on the top, but it's gonna be visible on the bottom because that fifth wrap came through, which is what the fish is gonna see anyway. If you want a helicopter off here, knock yourself out. If you wanna grab a pair of uh, nips, what I used to do, knock yourself out. I just got to the point to where I now just use one pair of scissors for everything. I know, I know, it's, a lot of people just cringed. Um, but that's, that's how it rolls, when you tie a lot of flies. So our, our, our wire's in, and we're almost done here. It's hackle feather time. I got a partridge feather here, and I'm gonna tie this in with two wraps on one side and then the other of our tie-in point. And we're gonna have three tie-in points. We're gonna go on both sides of our tie-in point that we prepared, and then we're gonna go on the other side of the overall feather. That way we have thread on this side of the feather, we have thread in between this feather and the tie-in, and we have thread in between the tie-in and the head and that's gonna cinch our feather. And that's all we really need, and then we'll be good. Now I'm just gonna go in front of my feather and behind my feather. So you can wrap this either way you wanna do it. You can grab something to kind of wrap it around, or you can use your hands. I'm gonna be completely honest, I do both. It really depends. Sometimes I use my hand, I just wrap it around. Um, sometimes I use the, uh, the hackle feather tool. You know, it just really depends. Uh, this is pretty much nothing more than the same wrap on the inside, the same wrap on the outside, and then when I tug, I'm gonna block the camera here. I'm gonna pull my thread that way, all right? If you notice, everything kind of locked and latched in at that point. I always try and keep my last finishing torque on the shank closest to me and then pull in line with that. I feel pulling down kind of wrenches, whereas if I'm pulling across the top, it does lay a little differently, but that's probably a personal thing. I don't think that's real by any stretch. Here's where I love providing some real life variants uh, in your fly. So a lot of the feathers that we put on our flies are gonna have natural oils in them. Those natural oils are gonna do what they're supposed to do and keep those feathers together 
and to shed water. Uh, so, water is gonna affect every one of these materials differently. As water goes over this feather, to the body, to the tail, it will react differently, move differently, breathe differently. So, if we give the business to this hackle feather, what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate these feathers from the oils that are naturally in them and kink each one individually. So even if they wanna get back together and hang out, they're both different shapes and roughed upness. Let's make up a word. So here's what we're doing here. We want this thing to look up. Now, I just gave this thing the business and it does look roughed up and separated, but that's just this way. I have found out that if you go this way, and just really try and kink those feathers down. Um, you're gonna put your fly into a situation where it looks more natural. So what we're looking to do to finish this fly up is build some shoulders and to kind of give this fly another layer of vibration of water moving over it. And what we're gonna do that with is a touch dub. What you get with squirrel is just an unbelievable layer of guard hair. It's, I mean, that's just all it is. It's all it is. Um, it's a mess to work with. It's gonna fluff up and go everywhere, and I'm sure I've breathed in a few packets by now at this point. But what are you gonna do? So all I wanna do is apply a little bit of pressure and just run it down, all right? If you get any wax that's visible, just take your, your wax and you can kind of dab it off. So globs are bad. You want this tacky to the touch. And you're gonna take a stack of guard hairs, and all you can do is touch, hence touch dub. And you're gonna look at this and go, well, that doesn't look too special, it doesn't. But we're gonna make it special. We're gonna wrap this on top of each other, and then the last probably third, we're gonna go up against the eyes, and we're gonna change our pressure. So we'll tie behind the eye, perpendicular to the hook shank. Once we get to the final part of the fly, our, our pressure is gonna change and go this way. And that's what's gonna build our shoulders. We're gonna fill, going perpendicular and we're gonna build shoulders by leaning forward. This is also why we wanna make sure that we always leave space on this collar because we're gonna to have to get crazy with our wraps on this touch dub and we're gonna to have to have more wraps than we probably want. So by being judicious in the front part of our fly, we're allowing the space for this. So I'm gonna go around and I've now built the space and now we've filled in that space. So now we're gonna stroke everything back and wrap forward. Material back, thread forward, stroke back, forward, stroke back, forward. And what we're doing is we're gonna build shoulders and stand that up now. And by standing this up, what we're gonna do is provide two different vibrations of water going over these flies. What you have to kind of remember is the perspective of what we're dealing with here. Carp are engineered to feel, taste, and smell at a much higher level than they are seeing something because their eyesight is poor. So if their head, if for the most time, is gonna be down in the mud, then they're really seeing with their other senses. So if something is falling, they're absolutely gonna be able to detect that. If that thing falling has some sub vibrations in it that aren't discernible on a fly, but on a bug, then again, I'm checking a maybe. That vibrated like a real bug. Bug sinking, it's struggling, those vibrations in my mind, are being mimicked by going over different materials. The last few wraps that we do when we're wrapping forward are the last wraps that we want behind our eye, all right? And then we're gonna come up underneath and, and, and secure our fly. So I don't, um, I don't put a ton of zap on my flies. I'm not gonna say I don't use zap because I do. Uh, what I don't do is have the zap be anywhere that's on the outside of the thread and in abundance. So I minimize uh, the zap, which in its strongest examples, uh, very little is used. Uh, and then I will build the head with whip finishes. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start the head off with the strongest lock on it. And that is gonna be no more than a few centimeters of zap on the thread. And that's it, all right? And I'm gonna go ahead and stroke feathers back and I'm gonna wrap four or five times around with that. Now I can take this and do a three to four or five whip and we're done. This fly will never come undone. And when I say never, it's just not, because that zap is not, you're gonna have to take a razor blade to cut that zap off. We're gonna finish building the head out with four or five whip turns, okay? And then what's gonna happen now is these two guys are gonna pretty much handle the front, and then everything underneath is gonna handle the rest. And it's just not gonna come undone. We've got a bearded fly. So you could take scissors and you can, you can trim that down and knock yourself out. I have just figured out that it's just faster for me to come in 
anchor my thumb and just use a powdering iron and just take it all out and it looks like there was never any hair there and we're good. So there you go, this is the HVRT carp fly. If you're new and you're getting into carp, uh, you're certainly familiar from the trout side with a, a gold ribbed hare's ear fly. And this is a, the guide's choice with the red is why that's on the head. Um, it basically has been put onto a chassis of, 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 of my carp designs and made to ride upside down and hammer carp. And if you're already in the game and you know what's going on, I think that it goes without saying that it's buggy enough and it's to provide you with uh, enough confidence to know that no question if I ever present this fly uh, in front of a feeding fish, they're gonna eat. At 0.30 to 0.31 grams, uh, to put that in, in, in kind of perspective, in about two and a half to three feet of water, this fly will take about a second and a half or so to sink, uh, rather than just dropping straight down. Also from the audio side, the lighter your fly is, um, you have to think about what bugs look like and sound like when they fall. Any kind of food, not even a bug, even debris, is falling through the water to hit the bottom. More times than not, it's not gonna make a tick a twitch or a sound. It's just gonna ease onto the bottom. So the softer I can make a fly sink and, f and flutter down and not make that much of an impact when it hits the bottom uh, is a win in my book. I hope this uh, video or instructional video has helped out, not only uh, for your time on the bank, but uh, behind the vise as well. Hike, fish, smile.